right, I'm Hank Philippi Ryan. And tonight, Karen and Dion and I are so thrilled to present our first ever co-hosted event from the back room with the Virginia Festival of the Book. Last winter, Jane Kulo, who is here, the director of the Virginia Festival of the Book, contacted Karen and me saying they loved our back room format and might we want to present an event together. So of course we did, of course we instantly said yes. The festival staff, you should know, selected our authors and books tonight and wow, did they do a fantastic job. Um, and we are so honored to present them as part of the 2021 Virginia Festival of the book. The festival runs through March 26th, just a little pitch for it here. So please check out the rest of their schedule at vabook.org. But do not do that now. Do that later. Do not do that now. Right now, we're going to get on with our program. We also need to say that we appreciate the Wisconsin Festival of the Book, who put this event on their schedule. And we welcome all of you who are connected with that here tonight as well. We are completely sold out. And that is so lovely. So quickly, I'm Hank Philippi Ryan, your co-host for this evening. I'm the USA Today bestselling author of 13 thrillers, including The First to Lie, which was just nominated for the Mary Higgins Clark Award, and The Murder List, which won the Agatha for Best Mystery of the Year. I'm sorry, The Anthony for Best Mystery of the Year. And breaking news, this is The Precious the brand new Her Perfect Life, which comes out in September, first time ever on TV here. Anyway, so let's get on with the show. And here is the fabulous Karen Dion to yes. introduce our authors. Hi, and I also want to just take a brief moment to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm the author of the number one internationally best-selling wilderness psychological suspense novel, The Marsh King's Daughter which um, was a winner of the Barry Award and the Crimson Scribe Award for Best Novel and is currently in production as a major motion picture starring Daisy Ridley. <laughs> it's pretty mind blowing. <laughs> and so, um, and I also have another psychological suspense. The current book is The Wicked Sister, which is also set in Michigan's Upper Peninsula Wilderness and is also a best international bestseller. But enough about me, I want to introduce our authors. So we first we have Sean A. Cosby. He's an Anthony award-winning writer from Southeastern Virginia, the best author of Blacktop Wasteland, Amazon's number one mystery and thriller of the year and number three best book of 2020 overall, Ooh. a New York Times notable book of the year. <laughs> and he's also the author of the upcoming razor blade tears and I have a feeling Sean that intro could have gone on and on and on because the reception for blacktop wasteland has been just amazing so congrats on that uh Chris Harding Thornton is a seventh so generation much, Nebraskan sure and her debut novel is Pickard County Atlas set in the Nebraska sand hills in 1978 when a family headstone for a missing child killed 18 years before, aftershocks of grief send the characters on an intersecting path toward an inevitable reckoning. So you can ask her a lot more about that book in the breakout rooms. David Heska Wombly Whedon is an enrolled member of the Lakota Nation, and he's the author of the novel Winter Counts. Winter Counts has been selected as an Amazon Best Book of August, Best of the Month by Apple Books, a main selection of the Book of the Month Club, and an Indie News Great Read, Indie Next, sorry, Great Reads pick. And it was just named an Edgar nominee for Best First Novel. Congratulations on that too. Heather Young is the author of The Lost Girls and The Distant Dead two dark mysteries set in small towns in rural corners of America. The Lost Girls was nominated for the Edgar Award for Best First Novel, and The Distant Dead is a current Edgar nominee for Best Novel. Heather lives in California in a small town by the sea where murder almost never happens. <laughs> Let's go ahead and play with the 20 questions. All right, this is great. Did you see me? Did you see me go under my desk a minute ago? I just dropped all the questions. <laughs> I, I have no, I have no option but to lean down and pick these up. So I did. So now, now you can prove there are probably easier ways to shuffle the questions. And next time I will do it 
I will do it the easier way. Um, so I, I'll do it in the order that I see you on the screen. David Wyden, let me ask you, what is the first thing you remember writing? The first thing I remember writing was a short story in second grade. And all of the other students hated me because I created uh, a new sort of, I raised the bar in my second grade classroom, but it ignited a love of writing that stuck around till this day. So you did, you, you did your assignment so beautifully that all the kids hated you. Very mm -hmm. wise, very wise. And, and we're pretty <laughs> jealous now, I've got to say. Well, anyway, we, we, we welcome you, we welcome you. Heather, um, cake or pie? And guess why I asked? <laughs> well, I should say pie because pie day plays such an important part in the distant dead, but I am purely a sugar girl. So it would be cake. Oh, oh no kidding. I, I, I love that today is pie day yes. and your book has pie day in it. That, you know, the universe just does provide uh -huh. when it needs to provide. There no question about that. Um, Chris, you're next on my screen. What was your favorite book as a child? Grapes of Wrath. I, Grapes read, of wrath. <laughs> I read it way too young. Like I read it when I was in fourth grade. Uh, I gave a book report on the Grapes of Wrath and then they put me up a grade in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story. I, I can picture little you reading the Grapes of Wrath. Yeah, <laughs> you and the Joads. Okay, that's fine. Um, Sean, which which do you like better, writing or revision? <laughs> writing, <laughs> right? I hate revising. I hate it. If I could get away with writing one draft, I would. That's because I'm lazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you wind up doing a lot of revision? Unfortunately, because I curse a lot in my books. So I have to always take down the profanity by 10%. <laughs> your, your editor has the 10% rule. I love that. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. David, yeah. <laughs> David, David, this is a little bit of a hard one. And I hope I don't put you on the spot too, too much. But I bet there's something that fits this. What was the last book that made you cry? You know, the last book that made me cry was Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. I reread it about once a year. And there's a scene in the end when Gus dies and I always cry. And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough just to get best novel of the year from the Western Writers Association. And he, he won that for Lonesome Dove. So okay. that is for me such an honor because that has been one of my favorite books for so long. And without a doubt, that's the book that always does it for me in terms of crying. Oh, that's lovely. That's such a wonderful connection. That's, that's great. Um, Heather, an easier one for you. Are you a morning or a night person? I am a night person. Oh. If I could live my life as I wish, and I suppose as authors, we kind of can, I would sleep until about 1030 and stay up until about three. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Kind of with you. Do you write late at night like that? Uh, no, I actually tend to write first thing because my brain tends to sort of dissolve into mush as the day goes by. <laughs> the mush brain, I have that too. Okay, Chris, high school, love it or hate it? Hate it, hated it, awful. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just, it was terrible. I was, you know, I was one of those, just, I was angsty, I guess, you know. Read yeah. the Grapes of Wrath in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all downhill from there. I don't know. Um, okay, Sean, where did you grow up? I grew up in southeastern Virginia in the smallest county in Virginia called Matthews County, which is named after a Revolutionary War uh, soldier who uh, got lost and found himself on the peninsula that became Matthews County. So that's my hometown. <laughs> that's, so. that's, a, that's a hilarious history. Um, David, you probably <laughs> have a whole list now. What is the best thing that happened to you today? Uh, the best thing that happened to me today was getting my 16-year-old up at noon and saying, David, go out and shovel those walks. We're in the middle of a historic <laughs> blizzard here in Denver, Colorado. We have two and a half feet of snow. And getting his lazy behind out there shoveling was by far the best thing that happened for me today. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You're a good dad, a real dad. Um, Heather, yes. is your desk messy or tidy? My desk is very tidy. 
actually. My house is a complete mess. I have this rule that you're either a piler <laughs> or a spreader in life. And I'm generally a spreader, but on my desk, I'm a piler. <laughs> Chris. Oh, no. No, I can't wait to hear what this answer is. What book made you want to be a writer? Oh, that was Patrick McCabe's um, The Butcher Boy. I read it in like one sitting and it, it just, I was like, I think I was 23-ish, 22, 23-ish when I read it. And I read it all the way through, laughed and bawled and laughed and bawled. And then I just heard that narrator, it sounds weird. I heard the narrator in my head for like, oh, like days afterwards. Oh, that's wonderful. It's wonderful. Um, and final question, Sean, what is your favorite place to work? Early, it's this little closet I call an office. But uh, <laughs> when I was when I wrote when I originally wrote Blacktop Wasteland, I was working full time and I used to write at a coffee shop. And I was writing there so much that they started giving me free pieces of zucchini bread because I was a, <laughs> I, I was a starving writer. So that used to be my favorite place. Oh, that's so nice. So do you go back and write there anymore? I did right up to the pandemic. I, I love going there. And it's so funny, though, because now I'm in a small town, so everybody knows about the book. So now everybody wants to buy me zucchini bread. So I have piles of zucchini bread in front of me on my – so I had to stop going. So <laughs> that's hilarious. I love that story. Well, zucchini bread seems like that was good luck for you. Yeah. So we're going to have to start eating a lot more of that, you all. Definitely. So Karen, Definitely. take it away with the book recommendation. Yeah, this is so much fun. I think we could just keep going round and round, but we tried to keep the, our intros short <laughs> so that you guys can spend lots of time with our attendees in the breakout rooms. So what we would like next is, is your book recommendations. We would like to know what are you reading that you're currently excited about? So um, David, let's start with you. What's your book recommendation? Well, really, I, I you know, to be on this panel with three of my favorite writers, I've loved all of the books of the panelists here. Uh, so I could, you know, I could recommend any of theirs and have. And indeed, Sean, I recommended your new one at an event I did last night. So that was my first recommendation for you of the year. I, I know there'll be more. Uh, but today I am uh, going to recommend uh, Tori Eldridge's book, The Ninja's Blade. It has a wonderful voice and energy. It is fantastic. So y'all, if you haven't checked out Tori Eldridge and The Ninja's Blade, give it a shot. I agree. It's a great book. Heather, what book do you think everyone should read? So I think Catherine House, is this showing up correctly? I don't know. Mm -hmm. By Elizabeth Thomas. I have, in addition to loving mysteries, I really, really like science fiction. And this book is a mystery that has a little thread running through it from beginning to end that's very sci-fi. And it ties into the mystery and the, the plot and the characters. So for me, it just hit the sweet spot of both genres. Great. Chris, what are you recommending? I am recommending, and this is a testament to how I'm recommending it, um, Wright Morris is The Home Place. It's, it's an old book. It, I mean, it's from like, I think, 36, 46. Oh. I can't remember one of those. Uh, it's a really quiet book, but it's very, it's just really, really rich to me. And it's, it's a photo text. So you have photos and then text and then the photos start taking over the text. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I love it a lot. Thank you for that. You know, that, that's one of the reasons we ask for recommendations. Sometimes there's a book that we're not aware of that, you know, now it's on our radar. So thanks for that. And uh, Sean? I don't have the copy of the book that I'm recommending because I actually lend it out so much. But my book is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. Um, that book, it's it's Dick, it's like if Charles Dickens grew up in the central part of the country and drank moonshine. It's an incredible, nuanced, rich examination of the existential dread that exists in everyone. And I, it's it's the book that last made me cry. It's so powerful and so moving. Um, there's a movie out right now on Netflix, but I heartily recommend you read the book. His prose is like violent poetry. I love it. Mm, wonderful. Thank you. Sounds wonderful. Wasn't that fun? We hope you enjoyed that taste of what a backroom session is like. But more fun comes immediately afterward. That's when the audience is broken up into four breakout rooms and each author in turn visits each room. 
we'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because those relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between best-selling authors and readers are the hallmark of backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded because what's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Thank you.